This topic is about bill of lading. Actually, this should be bill of loading, but uh, in English, the meaning of loading has been used in bill of uh, discipline as lading. Typical thing, same thing. So, this is the most important written document when it comes to trade all over the world. No matter what the country is, no matter where, where the ship goes, a good cannot be put on board a ship without this, the bill of lading. So, let's learn a bit about it. So, the first, the basics. Take a look, please. So, you can do a bit of reading. Yes, it's a freight shipping document. So, whatever the ship, wherever the ocean is, whatever the country is, whatever the harbor is, this is the document that helps uh, goods to be loaded and unloaded as well. Yeah. So, what's to be put on board? That's what the shipper does. And the one who receives at the other harbor, we call him the consignee, let's call him the buyer. He also gets to know what the shipper has uh, put on board the ship through the bill of lading and then the ship courier we call it we normally don't use the word ship we call it the courier um, actually it's issued by the courier given to the shipper after checking the goods loaded by the shipper and then the shipper would be informing it to the consignee so that's how it goes and it shows the destination where the goods are to go and the description of the goods and the markings and numbers of each several separate package all that is there so that's in a nutshell what's in a bill of lady and yes the history well it's more than 400 years old as i discussed earlier you know leading is a word used for loading about 400 years back we still use the same word british started it the world follows it now and the very first bill of lading, they say 16th century. That means, yeah, 400 years back. And these are the functions. Why we have a bill of lading? We cannot load goods onto a sh uh, ship without a bill of lading. Goods means things that we need for private consumption, personal consumption. Those are the goods. There are things other than the goods, like let's say, you know, you transport weapons or something, there are bill of lading is not needed. You, you transport nuclear material or maybe animals, live animals, there are bill of lading is not needed. But when it comes to the goods, this is a must. Yeah, act as a receipt of goods, check the meaning. Yeah, it's a, it's, it's a certification from the shipper, I got the goods onto my ship. These are the goods I got from the shipper. So it's a receipt. Act as a contract of carriage. So it's between the courier and the shipper. So courier gives it to the shipper. We hereby accept these goods delivered by you. And we certify that these are goods have been delivered to the ship. And then the shipper can send it to the consignee. Normally the shipper would load the goods onto a ship because the consignee wants him to load the goods, right? And yes, as act as a document of title. So in the consignee, collect the goods from his harbor on the other side of the ocean yeah he can get to show the bill of lading and double check the goods discharge to see whether all the goods are fine and this is a modern bill of lading see how it looks so it's a typical one right uh, you can see the features and all and the terms will be included uh, in another one the back of it so this is normally filled by the captain of the ship once he has uh, you know received the goods on board the ship he has no ch chance to check all the goods in containers so what the shipper tells the captain will have to believe captain of course has a right to open up a container and to check what's in it but practically he won't get the chance right so he has to trust what the shipper tells and the shipper has to be honest about it this is how an old bill of lading looked like. This is from the 16th, sorry, around 17th century. So see about it and see the changes now. The basics are there, but yeah, this is how it looked then, back then. Features of a bill, now take a look. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, keep a mark please. We'll be discussing what they are. Yeah, the names, city, state, yeah, customer, uh, yeah, 
and then uh, number three career name five yeah amount sixth let's take a look what they are shipper information shipper's name address email phone number yeah shipper means the one who sends the goods right consign information one who gets the goods imagine that you are sending a load of tea from Sri Lanka to let's say UK right so you are the shipper the party in uh, UK who will be getting the load of tea from you is a consignee consign his name address email yeah all that and shipment tracking information trail numbers sale numbers standard career alpha code all that you may see them on you know containers right printed or fixed numbers data that's important with this only you'll be tracking the information right tracking the right cargo tracking the right container custom order information what's that so um, all the information related to the shippers items that means a weight size shape palette numbers all that career information that means yeah name of the ship all that yeah the amount payable to the career yeah cost of delivery right uh, payable for the career transporting the shipment either by consignee or by shipper so how much would be paid to the career sometimes the shipper would pay prepaid or normally the consignee will be paying them and the signatures who both the shipper and the courier yeah type of bills there are two types of bills basically there are other types but normally let's get these two negotiable versus non-negotiable bills negotiable bill can be transferred to another party that means I can get the bill and I can transfer it to another party so the consignee can be a different person it's all right right sometimes uh, goods need to be moved from harbor to harbor to harbor right rather than from one harbor to the other harbor there may be transshipments there may be a need to you know sort of uh, move from ship to ship so there we need a bill of lading that is negotiable that means can be changed can be moved from one consignee to the other without a problem but a typical bill of lading has one consignee that's a non-transferable bill of lading the shipping happens in various complex ways right uh, there are some landlocked countries with, without harbors right and there are countries like India who cannot uh, attract ships into their harbors because of difficulties in navigation so lots of goods uh, headed for India are unloaded in Colombo we learned in a previous lesson right then shipped again transshipments we call it to Indian harbors through smaller ships so there we may need negotiable bills right non-negotiable is okay directly shipper here consign here no intermediaries between directly transferred that's it and let's take a look at some of the terms right in no event shall the career be liable for any direct or indirect loss of profit or any consequential loss whatsoever what is it so when you transport the goods from point A to point B sometimes there will be huge delays there could be damage to the goods as a result of these things the value of the goods may go down change that's not a problem for a career you cannot set a deadline for a career to arrive you cannot set a deadline for a ship to move from one place to the other because C is still a dangerous place to navigate so the career will not be liable for these delays and other things the career does not undertake that the goods shall arrive at the port of discharge or place a delivery on at a particular date or time you cannot expect that from a ship not even in this 22nd century 21st century right the second decade of the 21st century not possible you're not liable for the delay no action can be taken the terms yeah so if there is these kind of damage but any course or event which the career could not avoid and the consequences were of he would not prevent the exercise of reasonable decision. so I mean even after his careful effort diligence still if there are some losses that happens uh, to the goods in a ship 
career will not be reliable. Just imagine continuous bad weather, unexpected storms, right? Or action by a port, strikes, things like that, delaying the things. All right? You know, uh, maybe, you know, perhaps, you know, can you remember the Suez Canal? There was a ship that got stuck in the middle, blocking so much of traffic this way and that way. So that may have affected goods, right? The quality of the goods. None of these things are a liability of the career. Take a look at this. These are not issues where the career can be held liable. Act of God, act of war, act of public enemies like terrorism, arrest or restraint of princes, rulers, that means in you know, the early words, right? Governments. Seizure by the governments, let's say if a ship has not paid taxes or something, the harbour can detain a ship. Quarantine restrictions like these days, like the last couple of years, right? So many ships are kept under quarantine. They were not even allowed to come to the harbours. They were kept in the mid-sea for months sometimes. Act of omission by the mer merchant, his agent, let's say the seller hasn't done his work. He hasn't done his homework, so his load, his goods has been kind of detained by the custom side. So carrying on, right? Inherent vice of the goods, like let's say, uh, you know, latent defects, such as like transport of chemicals and all. They just are there, combustibles, right? Strikes, lockouts. So the, none of these are a liability of the, how the career. Remember that. So even with the Hague Visby rules, there are so many scenarios where we cannot take action against the career. The very reason that we created Hague Visby rules was to create some more liability on the career because earlier version of Hague rules created in 1924 completely cleared the career from any kind of liability. Just to create some kind of an even level field only, we created the, you know, Hague Visby rules. But take a look, even there, so much of uh, terms are there that makes the career escape liability, gives him immunity. Take a look at this. So imagine that uh, the courier is expected to obtain delivery from another ship. Let's say some countries have these inland rivers. So the goods are transported through river rivers like Bangladesh, sometimes to a certain extent India, especially US, Russia and all, right? Australia. Um, there, when the courier gets the goods from another courier, for those things, the courier is not liable. Because courier cannot double check those goods, right? So, ship to ship transfer, the second ship is not liable for the goods delivered by the first ship. And remember the last one once you load the goods on board a courier, imagine that you ran short of cash short of cash or something and you want to get the good get the good back no you are not allowed to do that you must pay the courier for the transportation you cannot get the good back you're not allowed to get the good back let's say let's say you export uh, you know this much of tons of uh, you know let's say um, mineral from sri lanka to another country consignee and the consignee at the last moment uh, refuse to pay uh, i mean uh, pay for them Let's say the goods are already on board the ship. You can't recall the goods. You have to pay the ship for the goods. Is that. What's even a general average? At the back you can see the express pearl shipping, you know, you know, fire fought over by, you know, the firefighting ships, right? Somehow to douse the fire could not work out, right? So when you are a ship and you are a courier sometimes you have the you know let's say if there's a real danger for the ship you can even remove destroy just throw aboard goods in order to save the vessel that's completely okay in that situation owner shipper will be sharing the losses that's a I mean a general average right General average is a principle of maritime law that essentially establishes that all sea cargo stakeholders, ownership, etc., evenly share any damage or losses that may occur as a result of voluntary sacrifice of part of the vessel or cargo to save 
the hole in an emergency. So, in a way, express pearl can raise this issue, general average. We've decided to, we've, we've requested the firefighting ships to come and, you know, start, uh, you know, spraying water and chemicals on to, onto the containers to save the ship. So that could have destroyed the container, the quali quality of the goods inside the containers, but that had to be done, right, to save the ship. Of course, they couldn't do it. So ship can technically create, I mean, a raise general average here. So that way the seller may not be able to claim compensation from the goods lost or he may have to reduce the compensation that he claims. Take a look at this. Courier shall have a lien on the goods and any documents for all sums paid to the courier, right? So let's say the courier is carrying the goods until he get the payments, he can keep the goods with him. And if the seller is not paying them, he can sell the goods to someone else, right? I mean, if the consignee is not accepting the goods, he can just dump them into the harbor, you know, into the jetty. So the courier has a right of payment. Any delay in payment, any refusal of payment, he can, you know, technically confiscate the goods, just like in the sale of goods, right? Seller's lien is very similar. Take a look at this. Deck cargo. Goods which are stated herein to be carried on deck are carried without any responsibility whatsoever on the part of the courier for loss or damage of whatever nature arising during the carriage, whether caused by vessels' unseaworthiness or courier's negligence or any other cause whatsoever. So deck cargo is not a liability of the ship. Ships uh, bill of lading would clearly state that deck cargo the ship is not liable of. So that means even if these goods fall off the deck, deck cargo is the goods which are carried on top of the ship, on the top deck of the ship. So it's not a ship's liability. It's an earlier custom, still functions today. Today, of course, the ships, uh, the containers of our very higher standard and the safety so that the containers don't fall off the ship and there's no, uh, you know, something like, let's say, a leakage of, uh, you know, water or, or, you know, the saltiness into the containers. They are pretty much secured, but still, the old custom still stands. That means a ship is not liable for the goods that are taken on the top deck of the ship. Special cargo, you know. Everything that's taken on board a ship is not a good, right? There are things which are not goods. Like, let's say, the coal, Gallanguru, or, you know, the nuclear materials, weapons, animals. They're not for the household needs. Household needs only the goods. So when such goods are taken, yeah, we may not need a bill of lading. We can make up a different contract here. There are the bill of lading contracts. A bill of lading terms and all may not be applicable. We can set up different rules then. Up to you to decide it. Right? There are the Hague VSB may not apply. And of course, if the goods are harmful, causing damage, potential damage, then the shipper has a complete duty to tell everything to the ship. Right? Full information must be given to the ship. And it's a question whether such information is given in the express pearl case, isn't it? Yeah. And let's say you take the goods onto the harbor and, you know, then the consignee doesn't come on time to get the goods, then the courier can simply unload the goods, dump the goods with the permission of the harbor, of course, right? And claim, claim compensation from the ship, uh, you know, the shipper or the consignee. A couple of things, right? The boats to blame collision close. That means if two ships hit against one another, collisions are not that rare, right? They do happen in dangerous uh, atmospheric conditions like uh, mist and haze, haze and all, right? So there are these boats to blame. You have to blame both sides, right? They are responsibility for a collision shall be shared by both the parties. And then this thing was the new JSON clause. These are new terms, right? 
so uh, if um, you know uh, the cargo owner to contribute to general average right so the cargo owner has to pay for the damages as caused by the negligence of the ship career or the owner so uh, imagine that uh, you know uh, the goods are damaged uh, because of the ship so they are um, the damage has to be paid by the owner of the cargo meaning whom the seller right that is that to the consignee consignee can't take legal action against uh, the ship there duty falls on to the shipper so with that we'll be finishing up on uh, uh, the basic description on the bill of lading and i hope uh, uh, the lesson kind of uh, would have given you a general understanding of what bill of lading is about.